from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. On today's episode, the Tie Cats announced two players have decided to re sign in Hamilton, and we speak to one of those players, Gordon White, to discuss his decision to stay with the Tie Cats, off season training, his love for the holidays, and more. It's Tuesday, November 28th, 2023, and you're listening to Tie Cats today. Thank you for joining me on this very snowy late November day. Felt like a blizzard at times in Hamilton. Something today's guest, Gordon White, doesn't mind at all. Big winter guy. And a big day for him. The Ticats long snapper signed on for another two seasons, the club announced today. As well as O-lineman Kendrick Sartor, who started in six games on the Ticats O-line this season in his very first year in the league. I'll have Kendrick on tomorrow to talk about that big contract. But joining me today is long snapper Gordon White. Gordo, how you doing man and congrats on the new deal appreciate it yeah i'm happy to be back for another two years and uh get this boat roll in the right direction and you got the deal done pretty early here why the decision to to return to hamilton here and and stick around with the tie cats yeah just uh i built a lot of like loyalty and trust in hamilton and it's my experience has been awesome so when i had my exit meetings we kind of talked like we'll we'll get a deal done early and be fair for both sides and try not to drag it on too long and that's kind of what I want. I want to be with the Ticats as long as I can. And we came to a quick agreement and I was happy about it. And yeah, we rolled into it. It was awesome. What can you say about the group on special teams and, and what you guys were able to do throughout the season and especially in that second half and, and this team getting better throughout the year? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we had a good year. Um, we had a lot of young guys coming up. Like in my first year, we jumped in with like six or seven of us as like first year special teams guys. So um I think we did all right, but at the same time, like every game, especially in the CFL, is like field position is a massive thing. So like mm-hmm. even just one little mistake is a it's a it cost big and in the game. So I thought we had a good um, good unit and a good group, but I think definitely uh, going into next year, we got to have a little more accountability on just like people knowing what they're doing and like not just showing up and making sure like we're doing the extra. Because when I was in my first year at the Thai Cats, we our group like who was still all together last year we came together really good and like bonded really well so yeah I think that was the main thing but either way this the season was good and it was a lot of fun being coached by Jeff Reinbold he's awesome and uh yeah we just flew around made plays and uh came a little short but you know there's lots of um excitement for what's ahead and bringing like that big but we we want we want to always be the number one special teams unit especially with high cats and it's like a good Throughout the league, we like to be known as like that team that when people are going against us, know they're going to get smacked around by the special teams unit. So, yeah. What can you say about co- working with Coach Reinbold and, and him coming in and kind of that mindset he has? And and he's a, he's a pretty cool guy. I mean, just seeing him around the room and and driving the motorcycle, and he's got that cool vibe, that Hawaii vibe too. Uh, but what was it like being with him this year? Yeah, I had him in my first year, like first year with the Tie Cats. I had him, and he was like on me like 24 (laughs) seven but I knew it came from like a good place so at the start you kind of take it as like why is this guy on me like he hates (laughs) me but it actually in the end like I'm one of his better friends on the team I'd say and I'm always in his office and we've got a really good bond now and I talked to him throughout the year but yeah I had him my first year I was lucky and I was super excited when he came back because he's just he's always on us and always making sure that we know like what it takes to win and what it takes to be like the best best teams unit and He's just got a good bond with the guys. You're not, you're not afraid to go in his office, whether it's about life or about football or whatever it is. And he'll always put a smile on your face and he always jokes around with me. I get it 24 seven, but <laughs> it comes from love. So I've, I've kind of learned to take it and have a little more tough skin and my tough skin is a lot from <laughs> thanks to him. So yeah, he's a, he's awesome coach and uh, hopefully he comes back, but we'll see what happens. Does he keep them? Does he drive the motorcycle every single day to practice or is he switching it up? Cause I've seen him on it. That's pretty much all I've seen him driving is a motorcycle. I I only ever see him on the motorcycle, but <laughs> probably when it's raining or if we yeah. get some snow, he may start Uber and over. But I think I always see it. If it's raining out, it'll be in the cage garage over by the, like the player entrance, or if it's not, it'll be parked right up front. So. You have a big off season coming up. What do you have planned in terms of getting yourself prepared and, and training wise? Yeah, just uh, kind of just slow. It's start. I'm just starting back up in the gym now. Um, yeah. That's just going to kind of go make a little program with my trainer here in Toronto and uh, get after that. But when it comes to snapping, I usually take some time off. And when it starts, yeah. usually February, even I'll start going at it again. But it's good. I think it's like for how I've been 
in my life when I take some time away from sound because it's so technical and mechanical. Like it's nice coming back in February, not thinking and just going back to what you do. So yeah. I like to usually take some time off, but make sure I'm always, I'm going to be helping out with a bunch of kids. I have a bunch of kids lined up who I'm going to be uh, helping a little bit with snapping. So I'll just keep me in the mindset, but training in Toronto, and then I'll be going down to Hamilton a couple times too. But then when the new year rolls around is when I kind of get back to my long snap and stuff and all that. And might go down to the States for a couple of weeks, get some nicer weather over there and better good good long snapping coaches over there there's not many in canada so um yeah that's about it do you have you talked to legio at all and linking up with him because he's in toronto too i, I believe yeah he's so, right up he's right up in woodbridge okay so do, do you guys ever get together maybe do a little training or do you have have you discussed anything like that yeah we uh we actually play call of duty a lot together we're, <laughs> both, we're both we're both taking this a little early <laughs> off season to grind a little bit of the new call yeah, of duty so me too I'm on, I'm on always with him every day. So we're, we're definitely going to get some stuff going in the new year together. And uh, yeah, he's right up in Woodbridge in the Italian ends. And uh, of course, so I probably won't go up there cause I don't belong up there, but we'll see. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely get him down here. Or we'll both go up near Hamilton or something. Who's leading the team right now? Is it you or legs? Who, who's, who's the guy? See, like legs would probably say him, but like, if it comes to an all around player, I think like, He's not a big objective guy. When we're out there, he, okay. he'll always have a lot of kills, but he'll he'll never get wins because he's always not an objective guy. He just wants to run around and gun. So, <laughs> so he's not the guy going to plant the bomb or anything like that. No, in the game. no, he's, no. Or like he's, he's, he's on a rooftop. He's on a rooftop he's, somewhere. He's, guys yeah, up. he's hiding somewhere, and <laughs> he'll always end with a a lot of kills, but he'll have no objective time or any of that. So, aside from from football and training and and playing Call of Duty with Legio, what do you have planned this off season? Anything exciting that you're looking forward to? Um, I'm hopefully going to travel. I'm trying to uh, plan a little travel with my uh, girlfriend who I live with. She, um, hopefully go down somewhere in March. Yep. Try and go down to like all inclusive or somewhere in the States or just somewhere nice for a week and just relax a little bit. So, um, travel wise, that's it. And then I'll hopefully get down to the States for some long snapping stuff. But other than that, just like, it's nice getting back. Cause even though I'm in Toronto where I like I'm from during the season, you'll get to see your friends a lot yeah. and family too much so make sure i take some time and see see my friends and family and uh yeah just start kind of get your mind off football a little bit and yeah. it's right when it rolls back around it's 24 7 but definitely gonna try and get down to a couple of buffalo bills shout yeah. out my dad he's a big bills fan growing Bill, up big so. bills guy big bills guy tough loss yesterday but yeah um, that was a tough very tough loss that was tight yeah, at the end there yeah just probably go down to a couple of those games and uh yeah, other than that, I'll just be kind of relaxing and hanging with my dog, and that's it. Not much. I know you were a multi-sport athlete growing up. Do you still play other sports? Do you still play hockey or anything like that, or, or is it strictly football? Um, yeah, I grew. I I played a ton of hockey growing up and a little mm. bit of lacrosse too. Um, I still have my hockey gear. Every once in a while, I get on the ice. Like, yeah, my friends usually have men's leagues and like beer leagues that are kind of pretty. Uh, competitive so whenever they need an extra guy they'll shoot me a message so yeah if it's early enough I, I would get out there but close to the season I try not to because hockey's just you never know but you never know yeah yeah early in the early in the off season if they need me I'm definitely out there and I get my <laughs> hockey uh <laughs> hockey mindset back and it's fun so but then He's obviously the play shinny every once in a while when it gets nice out and when it gets cold and the rinks are nice but yeah I try and stick to hockey a little bit and make sure I'm my st I still got the skill you're a competitive guy. Are you just as competitive in beer league hockey as you are when you're uh, out in the field? 100%. That's why it's dangerous. Cause every time I go to play and I'm talking to my dad, he knows how competitive I am. He's like, you can't just turn off your competitiveness. Like yeah. if one guy slashes you or one guy beats you, you're just going to be like, all right, it's on. So he hates when I play. And that's why I don't play as much as I used to, but whenever I get out there, I'm excited. And I take it like, it's like my a championship game because I never get to play. <laughs> so I go out there like fresh stick tape, everything. So you mentioned you're going to be helping with some kids. What's going on with that? Is it like a camp or? Yeah. So I I'm, I'm, I'm slowly starting to uh, see how many kids in, in the area would be willing. Cause there's a lot of kids that have been reaching out to me about long snapping and it's becoming a more of a thing that's noted by younger people, which is smart. Cause yeah. if you have a long career in CFL and it's, if you can long snap on top of what you do, that's just an extra thing in your toolbox. So yeah, I'm just kind of like, I have so many kids that I like help out with one-on-one -on -one where I'll just go help them out, give them advice. And like, just, it's so much one-on-one. -on -one, so I'm like, why would I not kind of 
might try and turn into a little bit of a brand and uh, yeah. just see what I'm getting. So right now I'm kind of just information searching to see what kind of kids would be willing to maybe like once a week do a clinic. Um, so I'm just slowly in the start to that. So I won't say too much. So I'm not lying yeah. at all. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, I'm just in like the process of seeing if I have a, enough like people that would want to do it to make it worth my while um, and make it worth their while. But other than that, I'll just right now it's just one-on-ones usually like, once every two weeks, once a week, I'll go meet with, I have like three different guys who I just kind of help out when they need it. So if any kids are out there listening to this and they yeah. want some I help come into the DMS cause happy <laughs> to help and happy to, uh, I want to get the little bit of a brand going. Cause I go down to the States and it's awesome out there. And I'm like, well, I, I could probably could make something out of it in in yeah. Toronto. So that's basically it. Yeah. Is that something you would have liked when you were young? Like, is that something you, I guess they probably didn't have that when you were growing up and, and playing football as a young kid. No, not at all. I was, I was actually in my first year at the Thai Cats. I was self-taught still. Really? Just yeah. raw snapping. <laughs> and then I finally went down to a, a guy in Wisconsin, Special Teams U, and he's like a very mechanical, like, how to long snap. And he, like, the video of when I started to when I ended four days later was like, he's like, you are using too much movement. <laughs> Everything was like, you know, I was still a good snapper, but it was yeah. Like, the fact of the matter of from the start to the finish, I was like, this is ridiculous. And he's like, I can't believe you played a full pro season this raw. Like, <laughs> nothing. It's impressive, though. I know, exactly. So that I, that's why I was like, now I'm looking back, like, when I went down to the States, I'm like, holy smokes. Like, I missed out on a lot of, like, good yeah. coaching. But I got to where I am being raw snapper. So, yeah, that's, like, one main thing why I could want to get a little bit of a clinic going where it's 10 15 guys once a week and just get them going because there's so much you you learn that i learned already at this level at the pro level that if, yeah, yeah. That if you learn at that age they'll just you'll excel so much faster and be able to be even better when they get to this level so yeah is, is that a guy you're you're going down to see is that one of those people you train with or are you kind of going all over to different people oh uh, yeah i went different... with i went to him um two off seasons ago and then last off season i went down to a guy named gary's honors in arizona he's like a well-known specialists coach for kickers punters and snappers and yep. has a lot of nfl connections and stuff like that so i went down worked with him for a week which was awesome but there's so many so i think kind of each off season i'm gonna poke my head into a different one just because yeah when i was down there they all tell me each coach is different and how they coach so you kind of just got to find the one that you like the most and then yeah because we they go to all of them especially because they're down there so it's easy but um, I think I'm going to look into going to Nick Novak. He has a, he does a bunch of camps. Um, I'm pretty sure in the Arizona area. So that's what I'll be looking into for this off season, probably. Yeah. And the weather's not too bad either. If you want to go oh, you know, down to Arizona, it's nice down there. Not at all. It's beautiful. Scottsdale, all that, all that area is really nice. I went down there last off season. It was kind of like cooler for them, but it was like beautiful for me. <laughs> yeah. so I remember first day, these guys are all in sweatshirts and I come out in like a sleeveless <laughs> and I'm like, this is amazing. They're all in sweatshirts and sweatpants. I'm like, yeah. this is like beautiful weather. <laughs> and I just laughing because they're all freezing cold and I'm like this is amazing so like who's this Canadian kid coming down exactly. here and, and with the cutoff but I mean it's it's one of those things too like we kind of take advantage of of that summer weather once it starts to hit like today it's it's snowing you're you're starting to see the seasons turn here unfortunately but that also means Christmas is on the way so do you have any Christmas plans are you are you getting the tree up in November or like what, what I'm, I'm getting the tree up as soon as possible I've been trying to get it up for the last like two weeks but my girlfriend's <laughs> refused to let me put it up in here. Really? So right when December 1st hits, that thing is going to be up right in this corner back here. And I'm going to get it all mantled up. So, uh, um, but I'm a big Christmas guy. Yeah. Growing up, I had terrible allergies. So I always loved the winter because I had no allergies. So I just mm -hmm. became my favorite season. I love, I'm okay with the cold. I like the snow. Yeah. Everyone likes hot and sun. I like cold and snow. It's my time of the year. So you're a true Canadian. Oh yeah. And Christmas is the best. It's just the best vibes, best everything. Everyone's in a good spirits because presents are coming and gifts and seeing family and friends. And so, yeah, I, I yeah. just put my Christmas tree up the other day and it's November. I, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, this is probably the earliest I've gotten the Christmas decorations going, but for some reason there's something about it when it's starting to get cold, at least it gives you something to look forward to me, myself being a summer guy. So I'm excited for Christmas. Gordo, you got two more years with the Thai cats. The goal is obviously the Grey Cup, but but next season, what do you think this team can do? Yeah, it's there's a lot of like up in the air with the free agents, and yeah, of course, like there's so much that has to be done. So I'm just happy I'm in the door, and hopefully, me resigning and 
guys see that they hope that like oh, we're yeah. trying to make a run and like i've been with the tie guys for three years now and first year we went to the great cup and then the last two we lost in the first round so like it's there it's just takes that little bit more whether it's in the locker room or just finishing on game day like i'm excited and i know we're going to bring a great cup back to hamilton and that's what the fans deserve that's what the team deserves that's what I've been chasing since I got into the league and I've been lucky to get that close already. So I know that feeling and the feeling of defeat sucks and I don't want to feel that. And I just hope uh, everyone like in free agency knows that Tycat's got to make a run this season and mm -hmm. hopefully we can get all the firepower back, but I think we will. And I think uh, we'll be ready to rock for me. Well, Gordon, congratulations on re-signing and, and being here for another two years. I'm sure Ticats fans are excited that you're going to be coming back. And, and I'm excited you're going to be coming back. I'll be looking forward to seeing you back at the field. But have a good holiday, and, and hopefully the training goes well for you throughout the offseason. We can catch up at the towards the end of the offseason as we're heading into that next season. But once again, Gordon White, thank you again for being on the show, buddy. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you.